Well, it's been a while since I've done uh, some fan edit reviews and I've got some queued up. So I think this month we'll be focusing in on uh, getting through some of these fan edits and, uh, and see what they're all about. Uh, first up, we have one from Simon D. It's called Fall of the Jedi. As I say in every fan edit review, fan edits are not strictly legal. I will make it legal. Okay, but that's not really the point. The point is it's not strictly legal at all. But the whole point is for fans to be able to show off their preferred versions of the movies, um, whether it's taking things out, putting some deleted scenes back in, all those sorts of things, restructuring the movie to, to have a different feel. All of those things are something that, that we as film fans should be able to enjoy as long as you own the original copy of the movie. I get many different comments about where can I get these? Where can I find it? You know, blah, blah, blah. I don't link to these because like I said, it's not legal. I will make it. Okay, we get it. But but the thing is, you have to use your search engine skills. On, on all of these fan edits, that's what you need to do. I mean, if you wanna find them, that's how you find them. Um, but in this case, it's not readily available and the only place to get it right now is from the original editor. So I'm gonna leave his email down in the description for now. He said that there's a possibility that he may get it onto a different site and all that stuff. If so, I will update the description with that information. But for now, just check the description and hopefully you can find it if you wanna see it. I found this one really interesting because he's taking six hours of movies and editing it down to four hours. So you're looking at around an hour and 20 minutes per movie. I mean, almost exactly that. So it's it's kind of interesting to see, okay, what's he gonna cut out? What's he gonna leave in? All that sort of thing. It was kind of a surprise watching this through the whole thing. This is what he had to say about the making of Fall of the Jedi. I just wanted to make the film for me and my mate, who is a Star Wars nut too, as a lockdown project and strip away elements which I thought distracted from the tone and focused on the Anakin corruption slash manipulation narrative and make the Jedi more in line with the mythic dying breed as mentioned in A New Hope, suggesting there aren't many Jedi left. As an editor, or was at the time, I tried to approach the material like Hirsch 2 and Marcia in 76 and 77. Take the material that's there and use as many editing tricks to simplify the story and give the film and the performances a bit more energy, flow, etc. At least for me and with what I had to work with. I took the example of the Obi-Wan's house from A New Hope as a guide or sand person waving the stick where they weren't afraid, if necessary, to restructure scenes or flip slash reverse images to create a different intention. LOL, maybe none of that translated, but it was fun to do. Also, doing the exercise actually made me appreciate the prequels and Lucas' script more. Once I started examining scenes trying to remove stuff, it made me appreciate why they were actually in there or important. I noticed more detail, and there was something of a narrative through line logic and direction to what was happening. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't realize there was actually something decent in there. If you've seen these movies a lot, you will recognize almost immediately what's been cut out. And uh, it's not always clear as to why things were cut out unless it's just for time. And that's the thing, man, when you're taking two hours down to one hour and 20 minutes for each individual movie, which again, this is in the way that it was given to me, it was two parts, uh, two hours each. And I watched them pretty much back to back and it was, they flowed pretty well. And it was actually kind of fun to watch it this way, even though it was kind of like a Cliff's Notes versions of the prequels. If you've watched a lot of my fan edits, you know that in a lot of cases, I'm I'm a stickler for the original vision, right? The original vision of the artist. That's kind of it's something that I that I appreciate. And you know, even though I don't think some of the prequels have some of the best scenes, there are some amazing scenes. And some of that stuff, the way that the movies flow, um, I appreciate them. Um, I've appreciated them more over the years as I've watched them. But in this case when you're taking so many different scenes out and then putting some, some deleted scenes in, what it does is it, it helps to focus the story in a way that really wasn't there before. You're gonna notice that he's taken out many of the, I would say, battle droid speech. He's taken out a lot of the Jar Jar silliness. Um, uh, a lot of cringy dialogue is gone now. Um, but I mean, some of it is left in because some of it is story-based and you just, you, you have to have it. But it was really kind of impressive to see how many things were cut out and how streamlined the movie was, even like I said, if it felt almost like a Cliff's Notes version. One of the things I noticed was 
how, um, and this is kind of hard to explain if you're not an editor, but you know how like you've got, you've got a scene here with music and you've got a scene here with music. Well, if you cut out part of the video, the audio can, can be jarring. You know, the, the music can be jarring when you butt those scenes up together. There are many cases where the audio from one scene bleeds into the next scene in a way that's pretty skillful. And I actually appreciated a lot of that when I was watching. A lot of the enjoyment that comes from watching a fan edit is trying to figure out, okay, where where is this going? Um, is, is it gonna feel different? Um, what is he gonna take out? That sort of thing. And while watching this, it was really, really fun to see, wow, okay, he took out that whole sequence. Wow, okay, how is that gonna affect the flow of things? Are things gonna be explained? What's interesting is that there's a whole plot thread in episode three that is completely taken out, completely taken out. And it doesn't harm the storytelling at all because in other scenes, they reference that thing that's been happening and it's very easy to see where things are going. And as I said, it really hyper focuses on uh, what Anakin is going through. And I think that is a, I gotta say, I enjoyed that part of it. Even though there are the some of the stuff he took out, it was like it was like, oh man, that's not in here. Okay, but man, it was it was really impressive. I haven't really talked about this before, but there are there are definitely scenes, especially in episode three, where you can tell that the dialogue doesn't match what they're saying, and especially like when uh, when Mace Windu and Anakin are talking before the uh, the whole Palpatine showdown, there is a there's a lot of dialogue that's being said that doesn't match what they're actually saying. And it makes me wonder what the original intent was of those scenes. Of course, without asking George, we're never going to know that. But it's really kind of interesting, like what this alternate version of the movie could have been. Now, I'm going to talk about some spoilery things for the fan edit. Um, I know that it's kind of weird to say, hey, spoiler alert for these movies that most of us have probably already seen. You wouldn't be watching this if you hadn't already seen the originals. But it's... It's a lot of fun to see what's gonna happen and how things play out in this new version. So if you're not interested in hearing the spoilers, uh, skip to this this time, like right here. Um, but anyway, um, there's a lot of things that were cut out. Like I said, some entire story threads are taken out. Um, the, the ones that are most notable to me is the Obi-Wan, Jango Fett, Kamino fight, you know, in the rain, gone, completely gone. It actually kind of works, even though I really like that scene. There's no Yoda and Dooku at the end. That fight's completely gone. And there's so many p bits of specific scenes that are like, that are, that are shortened, but they still work, you know? But it's, I wonder if somebody hadn't seen the originals, I wonder how well it would work because it seems like a breakneck speed in a lot of cases. There are some additions for of like political scenes um, between uh, Padme and the Queen in Episode Two. We've got some uh, the 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 actually really really cool like the start of the rebellion. You know, you got Bail Organa and Mon Mothma there. You know what I'm saying? And Padme, and it's the this conversation, and um, that's put back in. It's one of the things that if I had a, a thing that I didn't like about Episode Three is how Padme feels like a damsel in distress the whole movie. She doesn't seem to have her own agency in the movie. And I think it's because a lot of the, the scenes with her doing things, you know, when it comes to her dealings with Palpatine, her dealings with Bail Organa and Ma Mothma, those were taken out. So it's cool to see those back in and it gives her character a little more meat, which I think is, uh, is really welcome. In episode three though, man, the biggest thing that he took out was all of the Grievous stuff. General Grievous is not on screen one second. At first I was like, how can you, how can you do that? How can you cut all that out? I gotta say it works. It really does work because I, like I said before in the non-spoiler part, they reference it. They reference, oh, Obi-Wan is, is uh, you know, attacking Grievous now. And oh, Obi-Wan has defeated Grievous. All of that stuff is, is in the background. And like I said, what that does is it hyper-focuses the story on Anakin and what he's going through and it really helps to, it, it, it helps to show that turn a little better. It actually works a little better for me, which I didn't expect. And since we didn't get the Yoda Dooku scene at the end of episode two, we don't get the Yoda Sidious fight in episode three, which I'm kind of okay with. 
focusing in on the 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 battle between Obi-Wan and Anakin, it almost feels a little more personal, which is kind of cool. It's a it's a cool thing that I guess a byproduct of you taking out this extra story thread. Kind of neat. And the final thing that he did that I thought was kind of a neat touch was he took out Padme's death and Padme actually survives using footage from another movie. I can't remember what other movie it is, um, but it's something that I've seen another fan edit do, which I, I thought was kind of a neat idea. But what he does is in the references to Anakin's visions, his dreams about Padme, he puts in scenes from the funeral in, in you know, at the end of episode three to kind of highlight, oh my gosh, she's, you know, in his dreams, she's she's dead, but she never really dies in the movie. It's kind of cool. It's kind of a neat idea. So overall, I think Simon did a great job. I mean, I honestly haven't watched the original movies in, well, probably since I got the 4Ks. But uh, but yeah, I mean, I think he did a, a really, really good job. I'm not sure if you were going to show this to someone that hadn't seen Star Wars before, if it would make sense. Um, because I know the movie so well, I know the story so well that it works for me. Um, but it is, it is at a breakneck speed. So if you're not used to that kind of, that kind of thing, it's, it's, it could be jarring, I guess, for some people. But like I said, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed watching it. And, uh, yeah, I recommend you seeing it if you're a fan of Star Wars. Like I said at the beginning, the availability will be, uh, well, I mean, I guess check the description. Check the description for the availability. You may just be emailing him for links, uh, or it may be a situation where he's updated it and I update the description. But either way, I'm really curious what people are gonna say about this this fan edit and what, what they think of it. So uh, yeah, let's talk about it in the comment section. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more this month and we'll see you on the next one.